title of my sermon tonight is Nevertheless. Please turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings uh, chapter 22. Nevertheless, uh, the word nevertheless is actually a sentence connector. It means however, uh, in spite of that, or uh, yet. That's, it's, a service connect, it's a sentence connector. And we're going to talk about the word nevertheless tonight and how it was used in the Bible several times and how it's being used in your life and how it can still be used in your life. And uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, look in verse 42. The Bible reads, Jehoshaphat was 30 and five years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 20 and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azabah and his daughter, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. For the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. You know, what I want to talk about tonight is even if you've got saved, and you joined an independent fundamental Baptist church, and you've become a soul winner, and you read your Bible all the time, and you've increased in knowledge and doctrine and everything else, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. All right? What is God going to say about you? He's writing your story right now. I guarantee you, Jehoshaphat wishes he could hop in a time machine and go back and relive that part of his life again, and then he would hook up all the trailer, all the buggies and all the chariots he had, and he would have ripped down those high places. He would have got everything straight because he wants to be perfect in the sight of God. And we're all going to stand before God, and we're all going to give an account, just like Brother Marcel was saying. He totally ripped off my sermon. <laughs> but he did a great job. And... Um, so uh, turn to Revelation chapter 2. But um, nevertheless, what does God have? What is that one thing in your personal life that can be you know, brought up? No matter how far you've come, what could it be? Maybe it's entertainment. Maybe you're, you're, on, you're, you're firing on all cylinders. However, you're still caught up listening to worldly music or watching ungodly television or videos or movies what if it's relationships what if you have a great relationship with all the brethren in the church but your best friend is a sodomite sympathizer and you're hanging out with them on your on your time off or it's your best friend at work and yeah exactly you know and so or what if it's you know spiritual habits what if you are lacking in your daily prayer life and uh, you know, just fill in the blank. And I'm not trying to harp on anybody's sin. You know your sin. You know what it is. Everybody knows. So put your finger on your own sin and deal with it. Revelation chapter 2, and look at verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent you know what if somebody visited our church um this weekend and they don't come back for a couple of years from now and they come back and they say man y'all kind of changed it up a little bit around here huh so what do you mean well y'all y'all used to open up with a hymn and and then somebody in the congregation would pray and and then we'd sing another hymn and then we'd have some announcements and yeah, another hymn and you know just y'all don't do that anymore what happened oh, oh yeah we just you know it's all about the preaching now you come in, you sit down, we open up the Bible, and we, we let it rip. And that's all there is. And then we're out the door. What if we stopped giving heed to prayer, to, to hospitality, to praising God in God's house, the house of prayer? 
Amen. You know, what if we were to fall in those areas? And so that's how, you know, what if we were to, God forbid, stop soul winning? Right. That would be the worst thing that we could ever drop the ball on. Yeah. But what if we stop doing that? So when we look back on our life, when we look back on our church, let's not have a nevertheless moment in a negative way. Let's have a, neg a nevertheless moment in a positive way. Turn to Mark chapter 14. The word nevertheless is not a, a negative word. It's just a, it's a pause. What direction did you go? It's however. It's in spite of that. What did you do? Mark chapter 14 and verse 36. It's talking about Jesus. And he said, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. You see, God's He's gave us a pretty tall order, right? Not only has He saved us, but He's He's given us. If you're still sucking wind tonight, if you're still alive, God's got a purpose for your life. Right. You know, Ephesians two ten. We were created to do what? Good works, right? right? And so we are here to work out our lives from our salvation. You know, so. At the end of your life, when you're standing before God, they're going to say, you know, <clears throat> Brother Ross, he had six kids. He had a business to run. He had a church to attend. He had all these things going against him. His wife had a brain tumor. Nevertheless, he still kept on fighting. He still kept winning souls, and he still kept being an encouragement to his brothers. Nevertheless, he never gave up. That's what we want to hear. And let's go ahead and bow our heads for, and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for enduring the cross. And Lord, we, we know that uh, the calling that you have on our life, we do not take it lightly. We ask that you just give us the strength to continue to run the race set out before us tonight. And we ask you, Lord, to please help us. In Jesus' name we pray. And bless the next preacher. Amen.